Hello everybody, my name is Forrest and today I'm going to be talking Reflectix. Now this goes for putting in Reflectix insulation anywhere, but right now we are sitting in my completely stripped out Pontiac Montana minivan that I'm converting into the ultimate functional camper van. So specifically when you're dealing with tight spaces like this, the type of insulation you want to use are the types that are most compact. So I'm using a combination of rigid foam and Reflectix. Now the way that Reflectix works is it's a, a radiant heat insulation. So the type of material this is made out is actually reflecting a certain spectrum of rays. And so people think like insulation has to be something that slows down air movement or captures air and holds it as a barrier in between. That's not necessarily true because what happens with heat is it radiates out, but this bounces it back. All the information you really need is here, but if you don't have somebody to walk you through it, or this is completely new to you, you're not going to really understand what any of this means just by the pictures. So let's walk through it. This first one here is showing a two-layered uh, reflective insulation barrier. So this is in what looks like the rafters of a, of a ceiling and it's saying R21. So that's two layers of Reflectix. I don't necessarily agree with that you can get R21 from this, but this is obviously the most effective way to use Reflectix. And what you're doing is you're actually having a large air gap in between the layers of these Reflectix materials. This is quite thin, right? So what's happening is the air it's getting through the one layer eventually of Reflectix and then it's bouncing back and forth and that creates a really good layer of insulation. So in your build, on your home or your camper van or whatever you're using Reflectix for, you want to use that principle because you can see right here, this is another example of how you would use it. This you're only getting R3 from one layer. So essentially this is just put against a garage door. So that's reflecting one layer of any kind of heat that's that's bouncing against it. But R3 is a lot less than two layers for R21. And that's because there isn't a air gap between layers or an air gap at all, really. Essentially, you're, the whole the air gap is the entire building or whatever, the entire room or entire camper that you are trying to insulate, which doesn't isn't as effective because you're able to lose um, heat in through the walls, through the through the the windows, through the everything else that it's then bouncing against. When they're dealing with Reflectix, a lot of people will just simply put Reflectix all over their camper van build, and that's it. They're not thinking about how can I capitalize on air gaps. So one way that you can actually capitalize is you're putting a bed frame here, for instance, or you're putting furniture or cabinets or whatever it is, you can do one layer on the ground and you can actually do a layer around the box or on the underneath side of the bed frame and you're creating that system of a sp uh, air gap in between Reflectix layers. So another instance where, where you can really use Reflectix really well is on the ceiling. I have a one inch gap between the studs, the metal studs that are built into this minivan. And what I'm using is I'm using half inch rigid foam, then I'm doing a radiant lining, so not this, but uh, a type of radiant material like this, um, but it's super thin. I'm attaching that to the rigid foam. You can actually get rigid foam that already has that, but I didn't, I made that mistake. So I'm putting that on after the fact, then I have just under half an inch left of air between before I put this on. So what I'm actually doing is I'm going to suspend this on my finished material, which will actually be burlap sack. So I'm attaching this not to the rigid foam or the um, radiant lining, but I'm suspending it and attaching it to the burlap. And in anybody else's case, it might be wood or um, wall paneling, whatever it is, you can suspend that and you can have an air gap of just less than half of an inch. Maybe you get a quarter of an inch. That's still an air gap between radiant barriers, this and the, the radiant lining I was talking about, and you're getting that bounce of 
those spectrum of rays. You're getting better than R3, so that's really what you're trying to do. And then I'm not taking up headroom because that's a, that's a big issue when dealing with these spaces. So you're doing the best you can using these principles in these small spaces. So hopefully you understand a little bit more about reflectics. I know reflectics are a bit of a controversial um, thing because it's not as simple as you put it up and that's the R value. It's, it's more complex than that because there are different ways to do it to really optimize it. So a lot of people will say, no, reflectics doesn't work at all. That's simply not true. The fact is they don't understand how reflectics works and when they use them or they, they heard somebody else that used them and didn't receive this type of value for their insulation and for their reflectics, then they came to the resolve that it doesn't work at all, which is not true. You just have to implement it as best as possible. And so those are my tips and how reflectics works. And hopefully that's helpful. If that was helpful, Go ahead and like this video, um, comment something below, share this with a friend who's building out a camper van and wondering about insulating and using Reflectix and all that kind of stuff. And uh, tune in for more videos on this channel. Thank you guys.